Welcome to the Unstuck Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Miner. This weekly no fluff mindset show arms you with the practical tools you need to get unstuck so you can get exactly what you want out of life. Remember, when you change your mind, your life will follow. Let's get into today's episode. Hey there, friends. Welcome back to Unstuck. Thank you all so, so much for tuning in to this episode. It's a very special one because, as you will find out, the guest I have on the show today, well, we used to do this every single week together. We had a podcast way back in the day and It was so much fun. We had such a good time. We interviewed some amazing people, just had some really great conversations, and then chose to go our own ways and kind of develop our careers in different paths. But now we are coming back together for a really great conversation on some of the work my friend and colleague Meg Dahl has done for herself over the years and then now does in her practice with her clients. And that is kind of around the self-forgiveness aspect that I think is a new part of a healing process that a lot of us don't know about, you know, our healing process that we have with ourselves. And we'll talk about that today. But then also she is a huge advocate for self-love. And we've talked about self-love here on Unstuck and how it's not bubble baths and manicures and pedicures, but that it really is a non-negotiable tool to living your best life and living in your healthiest body. And so we're going to kind of go over all that and her pillars to become successful on your own quest for self-love. So we're going to get into all that. Before we do hear from Meg, I want to remind you all that the Unstuck Project is currently open for enrollment. Basically, all the work that we get started on here on the show, we actually do together in the class over the course of eight weeks. I created this course specifically for the woman who was in similar shoes to where I have been in my own journey over the past, gosh, now it's been five or six years of having unexplained health issues, having unexplained weight issues, having that wreak havoc on my mental and emotional well-being. And really coming to find out that that havoc that my physical being was wreaking on my mental and emotional health was keeping me stuck, was keeping me from finding true health, was keeping me from moving forward. And then the tools that I then used to dig myself out of that and get to this place of health and freedom and peace and happiness and joy and love and all these things... I put into an eight-week course for other women in the same boat. So that is what you can expect in the Unstuck Project. And that is what you can expect on the other side of the Unstuck Project is this newfound place of knowing, of freedom, of peace, of clarity, and this happiness, this place that you have a hard time achieving potentially right now you gain a whole new level of understanding of who you are, where you've been, why nothing has ever worked, and how you can actually get where you want to go now. So you get on that path. And it's just confirmed to me too, as I work with the women daily in the Unstuck Collective um, on a much more personal level to see the shift that happens from the Unstuck Project, because then when you go into the collective afterwards, which is, you know, the group membership where you continue on with this work um, with me, it's so obvious to see the change that has already taken place in them when they even get into the collective and how they are just seeing things on a whole new level that there's no way they would have been able to decipher in themselves before going through the project. So I really, you know, I don't want to go into it 
today in detail, but as you can see, I'm so passionate about it. I believe in it so fully. I know the power of it. Um, I see it every day in these ladies and I saw it in myself too, which is why I created a whole course around it. So if now is the right time for you to get going on this so that eight weeks from now, you can be in a totally different place, let's do it. Let's do it. Head over to seanminer.com slash unstuck and we can get started. All right, let's get into today's guest and our lovely conversation. First, a quick introduction. Meg Dahl is a holistic health practitioner, certified spiritual coach, and founder of the Nourished and Free Collective, an online holistic health and wellness space focused on supporting women in becoming leaders of their own lives through natural healthcare tools. Meg helps women up-level their mental strength, emotional health, and cultivate a loving relationship with their body through self-healing practices. And as I mentioned, she is a dear, dear, dear friend of mine. We've been through so much together. We've been on so many like world trips. We've been international travelers together. And I can't wait for you to get to know Meg if you don't already know her from our time together on the Nourished podcast or her podcast that is now running called Unbreakable You. And you can also find more about her over on Instagram, I am Meg Dahl, and her website, megdahl.com. All right, let's chat with Meg. Meg, my girl, I'm so excited to chat with you today. Thank you for coming on Unstuck. Hey, hey, yeah. Thank you so much for welcoming me on. It's been forever. I have to say, when I first started this podcast, I was like, I cannot wait for Meg to come on this show because, you know, my past podcast, it wasn't really your cup of tea, you know, talking about keto and diet and things like that. You had already moved on from that. And so, you know, didn't, wasn't really a match, but then now that I have kind of gone into this mindset space and talking more about spirituality and energy and just everything that we can do for ourselves mentally and emotionally to heal, uh, you're the perfect person to have on the show. So I was so excited to reconnect. And I think uh, there are some people listening who are going now back to, what was it, 2015? And they're like, oh my God, I just went back five years in time. And the girls are back together. Because for those that don't know, we used to have a podcast, the Nourish Podcast. How long did we do that? Like two and a half years? I think it was like... Because I think it was 200 year. episodes. I think yeah. we did it. Yeah, right. It Every was week. 2015, that is for sure. And it feels like at lifetimes ago, truthfully. It really does. And I just, even to think back to uh, the moment that we connected, and this was all via Instagram, which just shows the power of social media, but we connected via Instagram as fellow nutritionists. And like, even back then, the intuition that led us both to be like, let's just do a podcast. Like hadn't ever spoken, hadn't ever talked besides just Instagram messaging. And then it's like, hey, do you want to do a podcast together? It was so fascinating. And then now to see five years later, how much has progressed for us in our careers and in our messaging and what we really love to teach. But yet we were still already like on that path way back then. When we thought we were going to talk about nutrition, we thought we were going to be nutritionists and teach people how to eat for their health and all this stuff. And then now here we are, neither one of us talking about food. (laughs) It's amazing, right? And I must say, we have to let everyone know we connected over a plantain. Yes. And I just ate the plantain for lunch. And I have been just devouring the plantain chips all (laughs) of quarantine. Like we ran out of plantain chips yesterday and I was like, all right, we got to make a run to the store. That's it. We can't go any longer with what we have. We have to go to the grocery store. So yeah, we're still loving the plantains, but the talk about nutrition has evolved and we're going to get into your story, but I think that you agree with me in that the evolution comes from seeing what our own clients have needed. 
and going through and, and teaching so many people and working with so many women specifically, you also work with women specifically, and realizing that nutrition itself just doesn't cut it. Mm-hmm. Like it's great. It's a great tool to uh, add in, but talking alone about nutrition and even hormones and gut health and all that stuff that we are very much into. And I still think it's, again, great tools and something that I think a lot of women need to know about themselves. It wasn't it. It still wasn't it. You're still coming up against a wall. And I think that you notice that in your own um, journey yourself, but then also in the women you were helping, it's like, I've got to dive deeper with these girls. Yeah, for me, it was definitely majority like my own journey right and I mean you've known me since 2015 Mm -hmm. everything that I've ever done has always been rooted in self-love and loving myself and it's just like the underlying theme of everything that I've ever done Mm -hmm. but yeah over the years now it's just kind of all I focused Mm -hmm. on and talk about and help women with. But I think also what comes into play is back in 2015, like when I was talking about loving myself and self-love and compassion and mindset and things like that, like people weren't really ready for that stuff, Mm -hmm. right? It was just like, no, I want to learn how to eat and tell me about the food. So mm-hmm. us as nutritionists, that what that's what we naturally just focused on because it is what people wanted at the time. Mm-hmm. And I think our followers and our listeners have gone through that journey with us and they can also see that, wow, no, it's not just about food. And we do need to dive into the mental health stuff, the emotional health stuff, spirituality, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I think that you're right. You were really, because I think of your story and we'll get into that for those that don't know, you were really kind of ahead of the times because you had to go through all of this yourself at such a young age. And I really do think that I don't know what happened or why, but there are so many wellness um, practitioners that used to talk about the food and used to talk about the gut and used to talk about the hormones and the testing and the supplements and all that stuff that are now shifting. Like it's this massive shift as a collective of these health practitioners seeing that there's more to the story. And, you know, like when I met you five years ago, you told me about intuitive eating and I was like, what? Like, you don't follow a diet? <laughs> like, I had no idea. I totally remember that. <laughs> I was like, yeah. wait a second, like, break this down for me. Like, how the heck does this work? You follow intuitively what your body tells you to eat and you don't have a meal plan or like this set thing that you do every day. I was just totally shocked by that. And now here I am five years later and I can't imagine ever not following my intuition when I eat. So yeah, you just, I think really were ahead of the curve and now people are more so catching up. And so the messages that you share and have been sharing for five years, people are like, oh, that's what she meant. Um, right. So, <laughs> and now people are like, okay, I know what intuitive eating is. And now I'm talking about what we'll get into. And a lot of it now, I feel like that same energy, right? Like I was talking about loving yourself five years ago. And it was just kind of like, I, it was referred to by some people who listened to me as like fluffy, flowery stuff. But now people are really getting into it. And now you and I will dive into some other things that might sound a little out there. But they're game changers. <laughs> well, the good thing about the unstuck listeners is that they are very much into all of that. That was kind of a prerequisite for listening to this podcast is that you've got to be ready for it all and you've got to be open-minded to it all. So we'll, we'll definitely get into all of that. Now let's share for those that don't know you a little bit more about your story. Take us back to when all of this kind of began for you, which like I mentioned for you was at a very young age. Okay. So you want me to go all the way back? Yeah, I do. (laughs) All right. So because it is far back. So at 10 years old, I battled my very first eating disorders. I was diagnosed with anorexia at 10, 
which as you said, Sean, from a very young age, I kind of like dove into these um, aspects of mindset and learning about how my mind actually works, how my thoughts work, and learning to work with those thoughts in my head and the emotions that I was having, right? I wouldn't um, wish an eating disorder on anyone, but I think at 10 years old, I was very equipped with really powerful tools that a lot of women don't learn about until their late 20s, 30s, and even later, 40s, 50s, right? So I started to learn about those things at 10 years old. And then I was going through the rest of my childhood preteen years, and I ended up relapsing with a bout of anorexia again. And that really stuck with me for many years. And it just kind of like morphed from anorexia into orthorexia without me even really realizing what orthorexia was until many years later. And I think that's like the journey for a lot of women, right? Mm -hmm. We're just trying to be healthy and make the best decisions. And then many years later, we look back and we're like, wow, that was very orthorexic of me, right? Mm -hmm. So I struggled with eating disorders clearly for many years and was working with a dietitian at the time. And she just played such a foundational role in my recovery and inspired me to go on to university, study dietetics. And then I found myself in my fourth year of university, just like blogging in class and like not paying attention, Mm -hmm. right? And just thinking like, what am I doing here? Like there's like, none of this is really resonating with me. And I just felt a calling to not pursue my internship to become a dietitian. Um, I did graduate with that dietetics degree, but instead of doing that internship, I went to holistic nutrition school and graduated as a registered holistic nutritionist. And that's really what led you and I to connect on Instagram, just like following the same people and being interested in holistic health. So That was kind of like a very quick um, description of my journey. But yeah, I started practicing holistic nutrition. And then I kind of got out of the whole nutrition game as you did as well. And just last year, I actually um, graduated as a certified spiritual coach through the Institute of Spiritual Coaching. And now that's really where I focus a lot of my attention into spiritual coaching for women and just helping them go back into their past and really bring light to those points within their past and their lives. Like I had to do throughout eating disorder recovery and even getting to where I am today, just having a very healthy relationship with food and my body. And I also dealt with um, amenorrhea for 12 years, which I'm sure we're going to talk about throughout Mm -hmm. this episode. That was a huge part of my um, journey to get to where I am today. I was recovered from an eating disorder. However, my body wasn't fully covered, recovered. And that's what I spent all of um, 2019 basically doing. Well, the first half, I guess, and the last half of 2018. And it's just been such an incredible journey coming to this place of like fully loving and accepting myself and all of (laughs) the parts of my body. And now to be able to guide women through that journey as well, I think is so important. It really is. Yeah. What you're doing is so powerful and we're going to talk about that, but I do want to go back because I remember when you were talking about at one point, how you recovered or some of the tools that you had to recover from an eating disorder, you basically had to separate your eating disorder talk from yourself. And you called it Ed, I think, right. And you had this Ed talk versus uh, yourself and that it was basically like a different 
voice in your head. And we talk so much here on the Unstuck podcast about our ego, we call it like the ego voice or that inner mean girl, inner critic voice, and how that's not actually you. That's just this other voice that is, you know, trying to keep you safe and trying to keep you in your bubble. And it's very much the same concept that you learned way back then to then now bring forward into your life and kind of see your, your stories or your beliefs talking versus you, the inner you. Yeah. At 10 years old, I literally had to draw like a circle on a page and then another circle and understand that the circle in the middle of the page was me. And then there was this other circle that was like feeding me these thoughts and we were two different things. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, one, someone could call it an ego for sure. You could call it whatever you want, Mm -hmm. but at 10 years old, when I was dealing with an eating disorder, my therapist had me name my eating disorder or something. And a common thing for people to call their eating disorders is Ed. So I was just always referring to it as Ed. And then once I got into my twenties, I was like, this is a tool that everyone one needs, like whether they have an eating disorder or not. And so I t- started talking about that more and more. Um, but yeah, it's so important that we realize because we wake up in the morning and we have these thoughts just coming at us, right? Like you can walk past a mirror, you could be in the shower, you could be eating breakfast, you could be doing anything, opening up your emails and you have these thoughts coming in. And if we don't bring awareness to those thoughts, we just absorb them. Like kind of just imagine yourself as a sponge, right? You're just absorbing those thoughts all the time and you think of them as your own because what else do you know? But when we bring awareness to those thoughts, we can actually create that space between ourselves and those thoughts and then bring that understanding that like, wow, okay, so I'm having these thoughts and that's okay, but I actually have the choice to believe them or not. And then I also have like the responsibility to respond to them in a way that I feel like suits me, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that kind of work, it it's, it's tough. Like it can be very challenging to do, but it is so transformational and so life-changing when you actually do it. And it really does help you see what kind of, I guess, how or why you've been holding yourself back or treating yourself poorly or speaking to yourself negatively. It just like really shines a light. And so, you know, that's always the first thing that we talk about so much here is just that awareness, just even having that like idea, that concept that what is going on in my head isn't actually me. And I do have the choice is like mind blowing. So Mm -hmm. I, I just love that it's something that is taught for eating disorder awareness, but it's also just like something that every single one of us needs. Like it's this tool that literally all of us need, especially as women. I mean, especially let's kind of move into this, especially as women who have body image issues or, um, you know, have this idea or concept that they need to look a certain way to be worthy or to be accepted or to be beautiful. You know, these stories that, especially the women listening to this show have been exposed to at some point in their life. And I know the clients that you work with and the listeners of your show also have those stories and it's led down some pretty uh, dangerous paths for some people and doing some pretty damaging things. Um, And I want to talk more about the, uh, the concept of how that translated into self-love for you or how you were able to kind of learn that concept to get around those stories and to really start kind of squashing them, putting them in their place. And again, this is another thing that you were talking about five years ago when I met you and I was like, what the heck is she talking about? Like she loves herself. What does that even, how does that even feel like? How do you even do that? I'm so confused because again, not something I ever considered or thought about and definitely something I didn't practice. And now it's like, I don't know where I would be if I didn't have this unwavering self-love, like no matter what, 
And it was something that you originally introduced me to. So I'm forever in debt to you um, for all of this. But, but yeah, I really want to shine the light for other women on this. And we've had talks on this show about how it's not fluffy and frilly Mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean bubble bath. So they, they understand that, but I don't think there, there's enough action towards this full like acceptance and love no matter what, like, it's just this non-negotiable. So tell me your story with self-love and and how you're now practicing it. Yeah. So those are awesome questions. Um, Basically, and you and I were still doing our podcast back when I kind of created my (laughs) self-love framework. Mm -hmm. I kind of created these four building blocks because I was like, how did I get to this point? Like, how can I make sense of it for other women? Because I didn't really follow a framework from anyone else, right? I had these tools from years and years of therapy, but then I was just kind of like, no one ever just said, this is what you do. And I feel like that's how it is, right? You can't just go step by step. It's this really weird but awesome journey that all of us have to go on. But I was able to kind of create this framework of four building blocks or four pillars. And we already touched on one of them, and that was the self awareness piece, right? think that's foundational. And that's kind of what I would really want everyone to start with is this self-awareness that disassociating yourself from the thoughts and bringing awareness to those thoughts. And then the second pillar would be self-compassion. And that is kind of like twofold. So the self-compassion piece is like, okay, So we brought that awareness to those thoughts. We know that those thoughts aren't actually ours, but how are we actually like speaking to ourselves when those thoughts come, right? Do we like jump in and like take part in the mess and like really get in with those thoughts that are just not serving us? Or do we actually see ourselves as like this beautiful, loving human that deserves compassion and love and acceptance? And are we responding to those messages that we're getting in our head, that inner dialogue? Are we responding to it with compassion, right? So for an example, I think a lot of us right now are just like resting a lot more, right? This is a common thing I'm hearing from a lot of women. They're so anxious and like, uncomfortable with all this rest that they're doing right now, right? Mm -hmm. And we can get in this cycle of beating ourselves up for resting. And maybe we really have been enjoying this rest, but we're still beating ourselves up for it. We think we shouldn't. Yeah. We shouldn't be resting and we definitely shouldn't be enjoying it if we are resting. (laughs) Yeah. So we beat ourselves up for it, right? This is something I'm constantly hearing from women right now. But what would like this compassionate voice say to those thoughts that are just, you know, beating yourself up? Like, how could you come in and really be this compassionate presence for yourself? Maybe you're really tired. Maybe you're thriving. Like, maybe this is exactly what you needed right now, Mm -hmm. right? So how can we really come in and speak to ourselves with compassion, but also treat ourselves with compassion, right? That's, that's that pillar. Um, that second pillar is self-compassion. And then the other piece is acceptance, self-acceptance. Okay. So this one really has to do with embracing things that we've been resisting all of our lives. So when we we let go. And when we let go, there's like this amazing space to actually, like we give ourselves that permission to finally just accept who we are. And I feel like resisting it's, you know, have you ever heard like, it takes so many more muscles to frown than it does to smile. Right. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the same is with resisting our bodies or accepting our bodies like it takes 
so much freaking effort to just like put up a fight against our bodies. It's and like, exhausting. It's, it's so resist- exhausting. Resisting who you are, which is what we all have been ingrained to do, is exhausting. Like it mm-hmm. is so much easier to just accept yourself, which seems opposite. It seems hard when you're yeah. not doing it. But then once you're there, you're like, oh, well, this is great. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So that's another pillar that I focus on. And then we kind of touched on this, you know, there's a lot of people that think that loving yourself is bubble baths and like spa days and things like that. Um, but there is a pillar that I refer to as self care, because we do have this amazing responsibility to care for ourselves. And I think that's what going through eating disorder recovery really taught me that, man, like I treated myself like complete shit over the years, right? And I have this amazing life and I have this responsibility to actually care for myself. And yeah, sure, that does include me like making myself an Epsom salt bath one night and feeling really good about it, painting my nails, if that makes me feel good, that sort of thing. But it's also setting boundaries, reducing like even the toxic load within our home, movement, because we're meant to move and that that's taking care of our bodies, um, nourishing our bodies properly. You know, so there's so many things within this self-care pillar. So those were those four pillars that I had when you and I had our show together. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was really focusing on back then. And then in 2018, well, I had known who Jessica Flanagan was for many years on Instagram. I was following her and she wrote the book, the loving diet. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I came across that book, I was like, okay, if anyone writes a book, called the loving diet like we are meant to be friends right yes so I kind of like put that out there and I was like at some point in my life I am going to be working with Jessica Flanagan and I didn't know and this was in 2015 2016 I didn't know in what capacity I'd be working with her but I just put it out there I was like I know this lady is for me you know And then in 2018, I had her on my podcast. I found out that she was one of the founders of the Institute of Spiritual Coaching. She was offering a certification program for spiritual coaches. And essentially, it is helping our clients to move through and release old limiting beliefs through the practice of self-forgiveness. And again, that's like one of an, like another self, right? So we have Mm self-awareness, self-compassion, self-acceptance, self-care. I was like, self-forgiveness. Like I've, I've heard of forgiveness, but like forgiving myself, I just like, didn't really understand what I was getting into. I didn't feel like I really had anything to forgive myself for, right? Mm -hmm. I do know that a lot of people do feel like initially, like they do hold grudges against themselves for some things, but I really just couldn't relate to that. But then I dove into this course and really learned what forgiveness actually is. And you can think about it between you and someone else, right? So if you forgive someone else, it's kind of like, placing loving back into that relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Self-forgiveness is the same thing. We go back to a point in our lives where things kind of changed. So for me, I went back to the point right before I started struggling with an eating disorder. And the point right before I relapsed with my other eating disorder. And I sat with myself, like, this is like tough work, ladies, right? Because you have to go back into the muck and sit with yourself. And I had to bring awareness, right? That self-awareness again, had to bring it back into those moments. And we all make a decision about ourselves, about our lives, about something in 
that moment where our lives changed really dramatically, right? It could be Mm -hmm. a breakup. Mm -hmm. What did you decide about yourself in that moment that you were unworthy, that you were broken, that there was something wrong with you, that people are just always going to abandon you? Like, what did you decide about yourself? And for me personally, I was, gosh, how old was I at the time? Like 26, 28 when I went through this program and I had been, so it would have been 10 years since my relapse. And I had no idea I was still carrying around this decision that I made about myself Mm. because it was completely removed or completely absorbed into myself by that point. I just had no idea. So bringing awareness not only to our daily thoughts, but to these long, long held beliefs is so important. And that's when we can really bring in that self-forgiveness piece. So I lead my clients through these clearings where we can go back to those decisions that they made and help them clear those beliefs that are like literally rooted within them, their cells and their bodies through self-forgiveness. In order to clear, how do you do that? You need to work with someone like you that has this kind of framework to go through to clear them? You could do it on your own for sure. Um, I love um, being that guide for women. I find it much easier when you have someone intuitive working with you and helping you kind of pick out what you did decide back then and helping you work with that. But one of the ways that women right now could try it on their own at home, if they, let's use that breakup example, right? So they could go back kind of right before that was all happening and, or in that situation, what did you decide about yourself right then? Whatever that decision is, sit with that and literally say, I forgive myself for blah, 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 whatever you decided. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you know what that thing was, you will feel it. Mm. You will start crying. You will get dizzy. You will feel like very shaky. Um, You might feel hot. You might feel cold. You will feel something like that. Mm -hmm. And you will literally feel that leaving your body. Yeah. Just that release. Mm -hmm. And I, I totally agree with you that even just you saying this and, and walking us through this, it still is like, uh, I don't really know, you know, like it really does take a coach, someone that can kind of see from this outside perspective where your life has gone and where it may have started to kind of guide you there, because it still is like, I don't know, maybe it was like two years ago, maybe it was 10 30, who knows when this started. And Mm -hmm. I think for a lot of people too, you almost block that out because it was typically a painful experience or something that was really negative. And so while your subconscious mind has held on to it, you're, you've forgotten it. You're long gone because it, you don't want to explore it. But like you said, you do have to get into the muck in order to actually release it and to move forward from it. Oh yeah. In your own experience, when you did this for yourself, what was it like for you afterwards when you were like, oh my God, this is what it was. This is what I've been carrying around. I actually went through that. I released it. And now I have what, like what was on the other side? Yeah. So I love that question. No one has ever asked me that before. So, so cool that you asked (laughs) and it's hard to put into words, but it was just like, completely different, right? Like I was, I always felt like I was holding on to these things, but I didn't know what those beliefs were. And then I brought that awareness to them, even though I didn't know they were actually there, forgave myself. And when we forgive ourselves, like I said before, we're literally placing love in places in our past where we deprived ourselves of love before. And so there's like little people, right? Like there's like past versions of ourselves living within ourselves 
all the time. And then all of a sudden they feel the love that you deprived from them before. Like that's huge, right? So basically afterwards, that was um, kind of like the beginning slash mid um, way through my amenorrhea recovery. And then I ended up getting my period back. After 12 years of no longer having a period, I was able to just like not think about my body anymore. I was able to just eat food and like not be a nutritionist about things. It's been so cool. And that all happened because of what I just shared with you guys. Yeah. And from an outside perspective, as your friend, I just saw this massive shift in you and it's opening up up this whole new world for you. Um, Not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, and energetically, there was a lot that changed for you. Yeah. Because those old beliefs hold us back, right. From just like living. Yeah. Right. So I do want to talk more about that because I know a lot of the listeners here came from the keto world where they turned to keto to manage their weight, manage their quote unquote health, but really their weight, (laughs) as we know that that's often how people kind of view it. And as someone who you personally have had to gain weight in order to get healthy like fully to a place where your body felt safe and comfortable and you could have your period again, you had to go through a pretty uh, rapid, I guess you could say, period of weight gain. And the way that you have handled it is so inspirational to the masses because I think there's so many people out there that don't know how to handle that, whether it's just that they can't get to their, what they think is their ideal weight, what they want to see in the mirror and they feel stuck there or they gain weight and don't feel comfortable in their body and and they don't know what they're doing wrong. You know, that whole spiral, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. the way that you approach, you approached it and the way that you still feel about your body, regardless, like you just have this thing that basically, you know, you are more than your body, which we talk about here and you love yourself unconditionally and you accept yourself unconditionally is very inspirational. So I would love for you to just share more about what that experience was like for you and, and how you approached it to this place where you are accepting and you are loving no matter what. Well, thank you. That was seriously the sweetest thing anyone has ever said. So thank you. And you actually brought up two really great starting points for me. So you said, you know, when people are gaining weight and they're looking at themselves in the mirror and they're just like really unhappy. So that was one thing that I did not do. Mm -hmm. I didn't stand in the mirror and look at myself because I had this end goal of getting my period back. And it's just like, it wasn't about weight for me. We just like tend to make everything about our bodies though. I'm in that wellness space of women who don't have periods and they're working so hard to get their period back, but they're still making it about their body. And I'm like, this is the issue. Like we're still making it about our body. And one of the big things for me was I decided that I, it, I was just done. Like I was not making this about my body because it wasn't about my body. It was about me getting my period back point blank. Mm -hmm. That's it. And whatever happened to my body happened to my body. And then I'd be totally lying if there weren't some days where you were just like, whoa, I feel really uncomfortable right now. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I did gain a significant amount of weight for someone who is five foot two in a very short period of time. I literally cannot fit any of my old clothes. So a side note, I don't own any of those old clothes anymore. Huge, huge piece. So that's another point. (laughs) But we will have those days that we're feeling uncomfortable, even if we don't make that about our, like, even if we don't make this journey about our bodies. So I wasn't stepping on a scale ever because 
that's making it about your body. Mm -hmm. That's making it about your weight. So didn't step on a scale. I wasn't standing in the mirror, taking selfies all the time. I wasn't taking selfies because even seeing my face some days, it was just like, like making it about how I look. Mm -hmm. Right. No, um, like ab checking stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's all stuff that you, we just have to stop doing because it's just placing focus on our body. Right. But what do we do when we actually feel uncomfortable? And like you said, I just kind of have this way about me now where I'm just like, I mean, like I'm sitting here and I can literally feel my tummy like hanging over my shorts right now. And years ago, that would not fly with Mm -hmm. me, right? Like that was just all sirens in my head would just be going off right now if that was happening. So it's like, how do you go from one place to another? And I know your listeners are very open to the woo, Let's do it. Which I love. But I had this picture of myself when I was, it was like pre-anorexia relapse. And I was probably at like the highest weight that I was as a teenager. I was like, you know, holding on that like teenager kind of chunky looking weight. I always thought. And when I was like in my early 20s, I would always look at that picture and I would just feel so uncomfortable looking at that picture because I didn't like how I looked in that picture. And so throughout my journey of really coming to just be so okay with the my body as it is, however it looks, I went back to that Meg in that picture because I took that as a sign that I was still holding love from that version of myself. I was still not giving her the love that she needed, which is why I was still struggling with my body weight fluctuations, Mm -hmm. right? And so I went back to that Meg and I literally just hung out with her. Mm -hmm. I hung out with her, whatever, like if she was having a bad day, I'd make sure that she felt cool. Like, you know, I really took care of her. And that is part of like that self-forgiveness piece. I was forgiving myself for judging a past version of myself and allowing myself, giving myself that permission to just fully accept that version of myself. And it was fun. Like I got to hang out with like, you know, I don't know, 14 year old version of Meg. (laughs) got to hang out with her and make sure that she was feeling loved and happy. Once I started doing that, body stuff, mm, like no issues. It kind of puts it in its place. It's like, as this like unimportant thing in the grand scheme of life, it puts it in its place. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes you like, just, again, you're placing that loving there and you're developing this relationship with yourself that you've been like withholding. Mm -hmm. It was so transformational. That is very cool. Her child work, right? Yeah, (laughs) yeah. yeah, That is very, very cool though. And I can totally see how when you do make this connection with like all versions of you, and then you can see that no matter what, because your body changes every moment of every day, but you Mm -hmm. haven't changed. So no matter what, you are still you and you are still at 14, you were still you. And you were the you that needed more love and more attention and more acceptance there. So you were that person then, and you're still that person now. And your body is, is not you, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. It's kind of like this non-issue. And so you're able to really find this like new level of love and acceptance well beyond your physical body. Yeah. That is super, super cool. Thanks so much for sharing that. And I just hope that, you know, there, there are so many women who really just make everything about their body, then they don't even realize it. I think necessarily, I think we're just in that society where it's like, for some reason, everything's about our body. Yeah, it's just constantly fed to us. So I do hope 
that this shines a light, even just to start that awareness process. Like that mm-hmm. all it takes is to just start being a little bit more aware and it all kind of can line up after that, right? Yeah. I mean, like you don't need to go back and start hanging out with 14 year old version of yourself, but if you even just like stop stepping on the scale every single day Mm -hmm. or stop lifting up your shirt in the mirror every, every single day, those are little things that are going to make a really big difference. Even just like going into the mirror and already planning to judge yourself. Like I know, look, right? in, look in the mirror to see if you have food stuck in your teeth or if like all your parts are covered and then leave. It's just that easy. That was honestly another big thing for me, Sean, is like I was looking at myself one day. This was like in the summertime and I had rolls, I had pudgies, you know, and I just had my period and I like was standing in front of the mirror and I was just like, I look so awesome right now. But if I held like this visual of how I wanted to look in my head and then looked at myself in the mirror, I would be like, oh my gosh, I'm so far from how I think I should look. So now I'm not happy with myself. Mm -hmm. But if we like just completely remove that and just look at ourselves, it's just like, we're just a body, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so freeing to just look at yourself and just be like, wow look at this vehicle I have to get me through life. It's pretty, yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I get to it. be a human. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. This was so, so much fun. And I don't want to take any more of your time, but I am so happy that we got to do this. Finally, it's long overdue and I miss you so much. And I just like, we could just talk forever. I know we need another get together girl. Yeah, for sure. But thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your wisdom and let everyone know where they can learn more about what you do and um, everything else about you. Seriously. Thank you so much for having me on. I loved this. And on Instagram, I am, I am Meg doll. (laughs) Meg Doll, D-O-L-L. And my website is MegDoll.com. And I also have a podcast, which Sean was on. Mm-hmm. I don't have the podcast episode off the top of my head. I should have looked at that. I can find it and link to it. The Unbreakable You podcast. You were on with me. And that's where everyone can find me. Yay. Okay. I love it so much. Everyone go check out Meg's work. She does some amazing stuff and we'll have you back on someday soon too. A big thank you to Meg for coming on the show and sharing so much amazing information. The self-forgiveness piece is so huge and I don't think nearly enough of us are really taking the time to dive in and go back to our past and when there may have been a point that we needed forgiving and we needed that love. So hope that shines some light on that piece for you as well. And also, if you are someone that has body image issues, uh, it is a very cool thing to witness someone get out of their body and see themselves for who they are and be able to celebrate their body changing because they are getting healthy and you know you can share a- along with that journey over on Meg's Instagram. I am Meg Dahl. She posts frequently there about that. So go check her out there. And again, remember, time is running out. If you want to get in on the Unstuck Project, now is the time. Head to seanminer.com slash unstuck and we can start working together. I'll see you over there. All right, until next time, take care. 